640, more stimulating talk radio. I'm Bill Carroll. I had to double check the times on the presidential Oval Office address for tonight because when I first heard it, I thought, isn't that when the basketball game starts? Don't make us choose between a presidential Oval Office address and the basketball game because, Mr. President, you're going to lose. Because I don't know what to expect in the basketball game. I know exactly what to expect from the president in this case. Oh, he's all heroic now, 57 days later. He's, he's, he's finally going to talk to us from the Oval Office. About time. You know, he reminds me of that buddy we all had in high school who five minutes after the fight broke up suddenly showed up. I got your back. You need me. He's all ready to go now. Just conveniently, he was always late for the Remember that guy? Because he was hiding behind a bush somewhere waiting for it to be over so he can ride. He's that guy, Mr. Late to the Party, the President of the United States of America. But he's mad now. He's mad. It took a long time to get mad. I just, I really do resent, though, that he tries to characterize it like the leak is kind of capped now because it's contained. Here's what we're going to do, make the golf better than it was before. Uh, But it's not the same time. Just so we're clear, the president is an hour before the Lakers game starts. So please keep it short. Whatever you do. Hey, no offense to the people in the golf. I know they're struggling, but you're not going to get any real help from the White House tonight. Good news never comes in uh, in the form of an Oval Office address. Good news comes in the form of cash and personnel showing up in the marshes and on the beaches. Okay, uh, a lot of updates on the uh, illegal immigration front that I want to get to. The most important one, well, you know what, I'm going to save the most important one for a couple of minutes. I want to get to the hypocrisy of the LAPD and the LA City Council. But I want to tell you about this because it is astounding to me. Uh, this is not the most important, it's just the worst case update. The Houston Chronicle is reporting today, and they say they got an Immigration and Customs Enforcement memo, an ICE memo, dated May 27th. ICE and the, the private prison company, Corrections Corporation of America, have cut a deal to make more than 24 changes at nine detention facilities. These are detention facilities that house people awaiting deportation. Now, there's some legal process going on in a lot of cases, but basically most of these people are eventually going to be kicked out of the country, only to climb over a fence the next day and come back. But uh, They say that this is part of a broader effort to make the immigration detention system less penal, more humane. You know how you can make it really humane is have people not come here illegally in the first place. They just wouldn't come, and then you wouldn't have to deal with the humanity of it. Uh, and people at the detention centers have been arrested for being in the country illegally. They're awaiting deportation. You know, they're not criminals is sort of the attitude. Anyway, 28 changes identified in the email range from uh, fresh coat of paint kind of stuff to uh, softening the look of the facility, hanging plants, a relaxing security. Low-risk detainees will have freedom of movement in the facilities, will no longer be subject to lockdowns or lights out. I'd like to be a guard in one of these facilities now when the inmates can just come and go as they please. Oh, they don't want to have uniforms on them or anything like that. No, 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 no. We got to treat these people in a more humane fashion. Brian Bilbrey is a congressman, 50th district in San Diego, and he wants to talk to us about this. Well, actually, we wanted to talk to him about it because he has been speaking about it. Hello, Brian. How are you doing, Bill? Well, I got to tell you, this... I'm not an inhumane guy, but this offends me. If we want to solve this problem, let's deal with people more quickly and just get them out of the country. And uh, I don't want to put anyone at risk who works for us in one of these facilities guarding these people. This seems like political correctness gone mad. It has absolutely gone crazy. And let me just make an editorial note about something you talked about where people in L.A. City um, point fingers at Arizona that somehow they're violating the separation of uh, powers and that um, we can't have uh, 50 different ways of, of addressing immigration policy. The hypocrisy of a city council that is a, a sanctuary city that um, is obstructing the enforcement um, of the federal law, then to point fingers at Arizona, just 
just boggles my mind that people could be so brazenly hypocritical and not not even perceive it. Are they so blind? But this other issue with this. Uh, um, First of all, the, let me just say I'm glad I drew you into that conversation because uh, it makes me mad too, and I'm glad to hear others sh- share that. But but let's talk about this idea of making these facilities, these nine facilities. Uh, more friendly and relaxed. Well, this is, you know, I mean, there was a big claim that they, that if you elected this administration, you'd see change, and now you've seen the change. Is that uh, instead of uh, deportation, um, and we're we are talking about putting uh, bouquets in in the facilities uh, rather than uh, extraditing um, people that have been caught. Um, you're now providing bingo prob- uh, programs for them. We're actually talking about creating an environment um, that will encourage people to. Stay Stay um, rather than um, go go home and play by the rules. But then again, you got to understand this is consistent with the policy that that the open border people have said with this. And and you know, I talk from from experience. I grew up on the border. There were two houses between my my childhood home and the Mexican border. I've seen what happens along the border. But to sit there and 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 sit there and say you you're for you know um, uh, organized immigration and then do things like this. Things Things like um, what the Obama administration's um, catching illegals in the interior and releasing them out on the street. So rather than um, build more facilities and deport the the people that you catch, they're trying to make them as comfortable as possible uh, within our facilities. And I was a county supervisor. Well, this in is this is pretty comfortable. What? This is very comfortable. Oh, really? Four hours of recreation a day, including bingo. What do they give the winners? Green cards. Yeah, I mean, we have, well, that's that's probably part of the amnesty proposal they'll come up with next. Uh, month, a continental breakfast on weekends. Look, look, Bill. I was a I was a supervisor in San Diego, and I know what our county jails look like. That where legal residents and and um, and and citizens go. And I have seen the detention facility for the INS that's in San Diego. I've been in both facilities, and let me tell you something: the detention facility for the illegals is much better than those that you citizens have um, are provided yeah and let's remember i mean and we know the controversy in california about the state of prisons and whether or not it's constitutional to keep people in the state they're in these are legal american citizens who have not necessarily been proven guilty of anything they might be there on a charge had a previous offense but when you're we're talking about people who are in holding just like in the immigration situation but people who are here legally and we're not we're not giving them continental breakfast and putting flowers in their cells and, and remember them. remember most of these most of these guys detained in these facilities can go home anytime they want they're trying to stall and delay. So it's not like they are caught in a catch-22 of a cruel and unusual punishment of being held. They basically are choosing this option as opposed to going home. Yeah, that's really important to emphasize because, as I understand it, you have two choices. You can say, uh, I'm yes, I'm here illegally. I want to go home now. Or you can say, no, I, I, wanna, I want my day in court. I want to fight this deportation. Those are the two options. And if you choose to fight it, then I don't know that that entitles you to this kind of Cadillac treatment. Well, what entitles is this? Let's get around to it, Bill. There are so many things that you and I cannot do as U.S. citizens that people illegally in the country are allowed to do because there is organized groups and and um, and individuals who are getting big bucks for representing the interest of those illegally in the country as opposed to to the fact that they you don't have those groups standing up and fighting for U.S. citizens. I mean, if you go in for a bank account um, to open a bank account, you're required by law to show a viable ID, if they perceive you're illegally in the country, that requirement is waived. That's the kind of double standard and profiling that we have not only allowed, that we've almost mandated across the board. In the, in the state of California. You ask people, uh, Congressman, who've come into the country legally, many of them tell you who've been through the whole process of getting Social Security numbers and doing all, that it's actually tempting at times to say, you know what, I'm not here legally, because th- that line actually moves faster. 
web. So, Bill, I'll give you one right off the top. When I when I try to get my my children into the college system, I was notified that I had to show a personal tax return. But then, if I they thought that I was quote unquote undocumented, I only have to show my utility bills. In other <laughs> words, the standard for those who they think are legally present is is much more strict than those that they think may be break, violating a law. And this is that you know it, it's sort of interesting to hear the uproar about so-called potential profiling in Arizona, when in California they profile all the time, and they profile the fact that if you they think you're legal, you are now held to a much tougher standard than those they perceive as being illegal. And this, yeah, can this we finish this conversation exactly in a couple of minutes, Brian? Sorry to interrupt you, but uh, I, I, I need to do that for, and I want to get back to the uh, the safety aspect of these changes that, oh. that are being suggested because I think that's important too. No matter where you stand philosophically about illegals, uh, this is a serious issue. So if I can get you to hang on. Absolutely. All right. I'm Bill Carroll, KFI AM 640, more stimulating talk radio. Your smartphone plus iHeartRadio equals KFI. Any way you want it. KFI AM 640.com. KFI AM 640, more stimulating talk radio. I'm Bill Carroll. It's a world gone mad, really, isn't it? In California, we don't know how to house American citizens who are awaiting trial. And, you know, the prisons are overcrowded and the courts have stepped in and it's a mess. Meantime, though, we're going to renovate holding centers for people who are in the country illegally awaiting deportation. Nine different facilities, including, by the way, one right here in California. And they're going to get a fresh coat of paint, change some of the rules... Increase attorney visitation space, add unmonitored phone lines, give detainees email and free internet, internet-based internet calling. Isn't that nice? I got to pay for my internet. They don't have to pay for theirs. You, you got to pay for yours. Uh, detainees will be allowed to wear regular clothing instead of detention uniform. Four hours of recreation a day, even bingo. Continental breakfast on weekends, more variety in their daily menus. They'll be offered tutoring, computer training, movie nights, cooking classes, art classes, and even dance classes. So that once they're released, they can dance back across the border. That's great. I'm telling you, it's a form of insanity. Uh, With us to talk about this and uh, maybe a couple of other things that we have a moment or two here is... (laughs) Uh, it's unbelievable. Congressman Brian Bill Bray, 50th District, San Diego, also chairman of the Immigration Reform Caucus. Uh, I want to talk about what the guards are saying here because I think they might be on to something. Uh, you, I mean, they, they can't even lock people up at night in these detention facilities under these new rules. That sounds potentially dangerous because not everybody is just an innocent family guy trying to find a better living for themselves. Caught up in this net sometimes as well are people who smuggle human beings and drugs across the border. Bill, you're absolutely right. In fact, that's one of the biggest ruses that the smugglers do is... Um, the coyotes, the smugglers, act like they're poyos, um, the, the, um, the illegals, and blend in. Um, that's something that is, is tough to detect along the line. You try to train people to, to pick, those, pick that stuff up. But um, you're absolutely right. Uh, as somebody who spent 10 years as a county supervisor doing oversight for jails um, and honor camps, this this proposal to me just rings of big problems. I mean, first of all, um, opening up visitor visitation for 12 hours at a time, um, not requiring people to wear, um, you know, uh, a uniform. I mean, the the fact of, I mean, the whole configuration of having having the um, inmates freely accessible, not only. Um, to uh, visitors and the weapons and the contraband that are involved with that, but then accessible to the the men and women who are being paid to keep an eye on them. I mean, this thing is just really fraught with with major um, dangers. And I think that when you create that environment, it not only endangers those who are in the facility, but creates a heck of a potential for those communities uh, around the facility. Yeah, and the other thing that it does that's not quite as concrete, you just have to understand human nature. 
Uh, you've already got a president hinting that people who come to this country illegally will get amnesty somewhere down the road. But imagine if you're considering coming to the United States illegally. What's the downside for you now if you make it into the country? If you get caught, you'll go to this holding facility that sounds a whole lot like a nice hotel until you're sent back, and then you can try again. Nothing about these policies discourages anyone from trying. We might as well put an open for business, come on in sign at all of the borders. I hate to say it. It appears to a layman that the, the options are you can you can get through and work uh, illegally in a hotel or you can get caught and live in one um, paid for by the by the federal tax dollars. Well put. I wish I'd said that. And and the fact is, um, you, you know, the, uh, and they try to make this scam that, oh, none of this will be paid with tax dollars funds. Whoa, 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 whoa. You know, uh, and, until recently, the, the Mexicans at least had the brains of charging the inmates for all the benefits they get. This one is going to give them all the inmates and all uh, all the annuities and, and, I mean, all the amenities and and stick it to the taxpayer because it's all being paid for through the, uh, through the funds that are paid by the government for these operations. Well, how else would it get paid for? Well, and that's exactly it. I mean, you know, the problem is Washington probably is still functioning on this illusion that the American public has no clue of of where where um, the money comes from and who's paying the bills. I mean, the last few um, months we've seen this perception that, oh, don't worry, nobody will notice the trillions of dollars we're throwing around. And now they come up with one of these proposals and try to say, uh, look straight face at the taxpayer and say, oh, don't worry, you won't be paying any of this. Yeah, let me run this one by you because I'm, I guess I'm a stupid man. I can never figure this stuff out. I spokesperson Beth Gibson, uh, who's leading the, leading the effort for changes, says, when people come to our custody, we're detaining them to affect their removal. It's about deportation. It's not about punishing people for a crime that they committed, except that we call them illegal for a reason. You, you've broken the law coming into this country. You're being detained until we can get that right. I, I'm not. I'm not seeing where she's splitting this particular hair. Well, I, I mean, I um, I certainly want them to understand that that they have broken a law. I think that this is the kind of mixed signals that um, people will use as an excuse for amnesty of saying, "Well, we've been trying to encourage them to come here because we've been rewarding them with all kinds of different programs. So now we've got to take responsibility, i.e., the American people, for uh, for um, their being illegal here, and you can't ask them to be responsible." Well, doggone it, the same people that are saying we need. To, that that it's our fault that we we've sent wrong signals are the ones who are demanding that we sit there and reward them with every program and every every uh, um, uh, you know facility that they could ever hope for by breaking our laws and it's mixed signals you know every, next time I hear one of these guys sit there and say oh we put the we put the keep out and the help wanted sign side by side remember that they are also the ones that put out the fact that uh, you know free hotel facilities and 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 guest resort um, um, accommodations. Thanks for talking to us today. We appreciate it. You've Every de- time you, and any time, Bill. Keep you've up the work. Depress me thoroughly, but thank you, Bill. I appreciate it. Bill uh, Brian Bilbray, uh, Congressman, 50th District, San Diego, also chairs the Immigration Reform Caucus. Uh, I don't know if there's going to be any of that happening soon, immigration reform. Coming up, though, the LAPD and the hypocrisy now to have criticized Arizona. And I'm going to tell you how firm this boycott is. You know what? Actually, you know what? They're going to Arizona to learn how to answer the phone when you dial 911. Maybe I don't have an issue. Uh, We'll talk about that coming up. I'm Bill Carroll, KFI AM 640. More stimulating talk radio. Chris Little has an update.